Hey there! In this video, I want to show you a couple different ways that you could go about approaching a 360 turn. So we already have the 180 of the potato posed out. And it would be nice if we could just copy all that stuff and flip it and just reuse it all. Um, but let me show you the problem with that. Uh, if I were to copy that, slide this over, control C, and then paste reverse, okay? And then I have, um, yeah, so here are the two front views. When you paste in reverse, it doesn't always bring the markers over with it. Hopefully, Harmony gets that figured out. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the red animate off mode. I'm going to flip everything horizontally. So you'll notice that the little tie is on the wrong side now, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these poses, control C, press undo. So now everything has not been flipped and then I'm going to paste again. So now I've got this, but then it scales down to zero in between this front view and that front view. And let me show you why up here in the coordinate toolbar, I'm on the scene peg and I used a minus one X flip. And so it's tweening from negative one to positive one. So that could be annoying, but look at how fast I was able to get the entire turn on the other side. So I am going to go through and show you how to build it this way, because I feel like it's the easiest to reuse. And if I ever, um, if I ever need to copy the pose, that's the quarter front view over here. Um, I could simply come in here to the master peg copy that from here and paste it over on this side. So it, it can copy and paste really easy on both sides. If I ever update this one somehow, let's just say that I always wanted him to be, you know, holding his buttons. <laughs> I could copy and paste that over to here and it would be really easy to update. Okay. But the purpose of this first video is I want to show you how you could pose out the entire full 360 so that when you tween from this to this, you don't get that weird um, collapsing down to zero. Okay, so let me show you how to do it. I'm going to press undo a bunch of times until I have this back here. So the method is that you want to go and render out your frames. So I'm going to go to my right node and I'm going to say TTO underscore turn, and I'm going to choose a JPEG sequence. And leading zeros, I'm just going to choose zero one. I don't need movie. And I'm also going to put a little dash after this. You don't have to, but I, I want to. Okay, there it is. Now I'm going to render it out. File, export, render right nodes. So whatever right nodes are here <clears throat> that are turned on right now, not disabled. It will render them out. Okay, I want from frame 1 to 15. I'll press OK. All right, so here I am in my potato project folder, and here are all of the exported images. Okay, so I'm going to click on here and press Control C, and then I'm going to import them. File, import, images, Browse, paste that, shift select all of these, press open. Yes, I want to create a single layer named PTO turn. That sounds good. Keep as original bitmap. Yeah, that sounds good. Rules, project resolution, alpha. Doesn't matter what I choose because it has a it's a JPEG, it doesn't have transparency, so any of these will give the same result. I'll press OK. And it just imported an image, and it, it always imports it in the weirdest places. Um, the only consistent place that I've always found is it always brings it into the bottom of the timeline. So I will come down here, click on it, come into the node view, press Control X, and then left click where I want to paste it, press Control V, and now I can more easily get to that. Okay. So this is just like a flattened down image of the potato and I want to be able to see through it. So I'm going to change the opacity. I'm going to press, I'm going to come down to the node library. 
type transparency, bring in a transparency node, hold alt to drag it into the cable. And by default, it, it always comes in at 50% unless you change it to something else. 50% sounds good to me. I'm going to select these now because if I try clicking on anything, um, it clicks on the reference. I'm going to lock it. And then I'm going to go to my timeline. And I want to move some things around so I have enough uh, space for the 360 to get posed out. So I'm going to press 0. And I am going to move these things down a little bit further. Shift select those, bring them down to 40. Slide this down. Okay. Just want to give myself enough room to work here. All right. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to have um, the front view and then the almost front view and then the quarter front view, right? And I want the same kind of thing happening on the other side of the rig. So I, I'll just mark this right now with a red. So mark frame red, that's going to be the almost front. And then here's going to be the quarter front. Okay. Now with the PTO turn, so this is the image sequence I brought in. I kind of want it to be on the I want it to be flipped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock it. I'm going to choose the animate off mode transform tool. The animate off will make sure that it does whatever I do for the entire timeline. So I'm going to go to tool properties and choose flip horizontal. Okay. So now I have the potato facing the other direction. And I want this to be paste. I want this to be a reversed sequence. So let me show you what I mean by that. Right now, he's facing forward, when actually I want the forward one to be here, and then when he's facing back is going to be the first thing. So let me just show you what I mean. I'm going to shift select all of these, press cut, control X, and then I'm going to right click and say paste reverse. Okay, so now he's turning like that. And then when I get here, he's going to keep turning. So let me just slide these over here. This one is the front facing one. Okay. So now if I go forward and backward, you'll see what's happening, right? Like that's essentially what I want to happen. Okay. So a lot of the time I will go ahead and pose out the profile first and then tween it to get the quarter front. But for, for this purpose, I'm just going to go ahead and start working on the quarter front and show you how it behaves. Okay. So I need to lock this again. I'm going to use um, my transform tool and animate current frame. And I need the rig to be showing up. So I'm going to copy this first pose and paste it here. And I didn't mean for that mark frame to turn the other color. I want it to be orange. OK, so I need to pose out the quarter front view. Now, just like the last time, you can refer back to the videos about posing the 180. Um, I'm going to start at the top and say, OK, do I need to rotate? Do I need to move where the master is moving from? No, that one looks good. Do I need to change where the hat and the torso are go moving from? No, that's good. Just keep coming down. So um, potato hat. I'll, I'll worry about that one later. I want to go to the, the facial features, okay? So I'm going to move this over. I'm just looking at the blue pivot and seeing if that's where I want all the features to be. And yes, this is pretty much positioned where I want it to be. And now I'll go through and make sure that all of the details are where I want them. This is where it's really nice that we already have um, a reference because it's easy to kind of just I press B B B B B to go up that chain. Come here, make sure the blue is where it needs to be. I'm going to scale it down, holding Shift and scaling it. Then I'm going to move this. Okay, so there's the face. 
I can get this moved over. My deformers move things where they need to go. And I would probably have to add some more art so that the bandana continues around the rest of his body. Then you just kind of have to make up what would happen with that. Let me work on the deformers of the body real quick. Hold down, bring it in front. Okay, that's as far as I'm going to go. I hope you're getting the idea. You just go ahead and kind of copy what you see for the most part and worry about the details later. Now, if I open up another node view and I go to where my uh, potato turn reference, I'm going to turn that off, press D. Now watch, I can tween from this view to that view and there's not that minus one X flip thing that I was showing you. Now, this is nice, except I can't just dig in here and copy and paste from one side to the other. So if I ever update this pose over here on this side, you know, like make him always hold the edge of his code or something, I would have to update it on this side and I would have to update it on this side separately. Okay, And so it, it kind of takes almost twice the work to pose out the full 360 so that it will tween perfectly across the front. But that's such a minor thing, especially on a character like this that doesn't have a ton of differences. Like he's he's pretty symmetric on both sides, except that, you know, that little tie and some of his spots and stuff. So my preference on this character would be to, to pose just the 180 and then flip it. Um, the other reason is if you're gonna pose out the full 360 so you can do all the turn and tween nice, you also have to repose out all of your tilts. So I would do the same process. I would export the image sequences of these and then I would flip them and then um, match the poses. Um, and I usually would go ahead and just flip the mouths. I don't want to draw a whole bunch of separate mouths for that side. I would just X flip the, um, I would X flip this mouth builder peg um, so that I can use all of the quarter front, front and profile mouths. So no matter what you do, you're going to have to do a flip somewhere. So um, it's kind of up to you and how much the animators are going to need it um, to perform. If they need to do nice, subtle, gentle things through the middle, then I guess you might want that. But I've talked to a lot of classic Disney animators and they tell you never use a front straight on dead looking pose. You always want to be a little bit off of front. So um, just keep that in mind. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how I actually prefer to uh, save time and reuse things, okay? All right, thanks. See you soon.